What is it, nurse? 120 over 80. 120 over 80, that's 12 over 8. That's one and a half. <laughs> that's 50% up. Don't worry. Oh, did you hear that, Frank? She said, don't worry. What do you think she meant by that? Well, she meant, don't worry. Oh, don't be silly. It's a childish. Don't worry means don't worry. What kind of reasoning is that, Frank, for goodness sake? So they don't say don't worry that you don't worry, mate. <laughs> I can't lie here. Well, what are you doing? They did an ECG on me. Well, that's routine. Frank, it is my heart. I'm entitled to know. Good heavens, it's like the Himalayas. Look at that. <laughs> up, 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 all the time up. Yeah, well, look, he comes down again. What is that there? Well, that's a blot. You can die of a blot. <laughs> <laughs> that's clots, you clown. Look, we've been here four blessed hours and you've been raving on the whole time. The only danger you're in is being certified. <laughs> Frank, I did collapse. <laughs> you didn't collapse. I was leading five love and you developed chest pains. Are you saying I did it on purpose? No, I'm saying it's indigestion. Indi indigestion? Don't spend this kind of money on indigestion, Frank. Now, wait a minute. I will show you, just a minute here, I will show you a perfectly normal ECG. Well, how do you know that you're not a doctor? I read the Sunday Times, Frank. <laughs> I know about these things. I'm 41. It's all too common a pattern. I'm at risk. I'm a high-stress executive. <laughs> You're a low-paid librarian. <laughs> and the only stress you've ever suffered is getting to page three of the sun before Miss Peabody burns it. It's not a spinner's wicket. No, it was the better. He's gone off. Frank. My voice is a bit weak. <laughs> Frank, if anything should happen at all to me, anything at all, I would like you to have my complete set of first 50 Eagle comics. <laughs> Except, of course, you know, number 42, which, as you know, you know, was at the Wolf Cup camp with me and uh, had an accident and had to use it. <laughs> Dan Deere came to the rescue. <laughs> Tim! Frank, and, and I would like you to have my wonder book of the Brabazon and all my dinky toys <laughs> and the junior bull worker. Now, that hasn't been used at all. I couldn't get it out of the box, to be honest. <laughs> Look, uh, Tim... You're not after my watch as well, are you? <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, look, you know, I mean, would you mind desperately? I mean, you know, Saturday mornings are precious, and, well, I've got to paint over this stripped pine. Yeah, all right, Frank, all right. Life has to go on, I suppose. For some of us, at least. <laughs> look, it'll be something you've eaten. You'll be all right. You see, it'll all be forgotten tomorrow. Yes. Cheers, Tim. Yes, forgotten, yes. I'll be forgotten tomorrow, I expect. Even in the pub. I'll be forgotten. Hello, Frank. What are you looking so miserable about? We lost at ping pong. Oh. <laughs> oh, there was something else. Oh, yeah. Timothy Lumsden died. I thought we had a chance with that ping pong. Yeah. <laughs> what are you having, Frank? Our usual, Jean, please. You hear that, Jean? Timothy, what's it? Cop to. Who? Timothy, um, thing. Uh, friend of Frank's, wasn't he, Frank? Well, loosely. Going to the funeral? No, haven't got the time. I've got to strip off all the strip pile I painted over. <laughs> that little bloke, um, uh, doings. Lumsden. Timothy Lumsden. Was that his name? I can't remember. 
Mr. Lumsden. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. Yes. You, Lumsden. Yes. Sorry, I was. Uh, I was in the pub there. <laughs> We'd all like to be there, mate. Well, you're not the caesarean. <laughs> no, no, I'm the librarian. <laughs> oh, I'm a scorpion myself. <laughs> well, your blood tests, it's all right. Your pressure, it's fine. You're one of us. <laughs> and your ECG. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what? What? Sorry. It's uh, your ECG, isn't it? Yes. He says, I don't, I don't want you to pull any punches, Doctor. You know, I'm ready for it. Please give it to me straight in the chin, you know. I'm, I'm ready for this. So, the, I mean, who would have thought my hard white flame would burn this long, you know? <laughs> I've had a pretty good innings, really. A couple of lucky ones off the outside edge, you know. <laughs> the odd painful whack to the protector. Well, I reckon, I reckon we ought to keep you in for 24 hours. Oh, what? 24 hours? Always oh, like that, is it? So short a time. I'm going to show this to Mr. Aziz. Uh, I'll look, uh, stay on the couch there, will you? And uh, well, I'd better cover you up, I suppose. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I don't want to be in here. This strange place. I want to go home with my mother. I don't want to be here. I'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got my fountain pens dropped out of the window. <laughs> They're always doing that. <laughs> Sorry? No, as a matter of fact, uh, Nurse, I'll be absolutely frank with you. I'm discharging myself. Ah. Uh... Hey, it's just a. Well, no. <laughs> no, no, not this kind of discharge. I. I don't need to. I. I. Well. Well, I'll do the best I can for you. <laughs> Yes, Mother. For the time being. <laughs> Wipe your feet. Oh, does it matter really, Mother? Yes, it does. Look at you. Mrs. Quilsley doesn't want to see your legs. <laughs> it's now or never. <laughs> Say good afternoon to Mrs. Quilsley. Good afternoon, Mrs. Quilsley. Good afternoon, Timothy. Mother, I have something very, very important to talk to her. Could I have a little private chat with you about a little tete-a-tete? -tete? Language, Timothy? <laughs> it's French, father. Dirty thoughts, stamp the growth. Oh, that'll be the ladies. Oh, yes. Would you mind, Mrs. No, Quilsley? Mother. Mother. I have something very, very important to say to you. And I have something very, very important to say to you. I tidied up your room today. All those eagle comics are going to the jumble this afternoon. <laughs> what? Two pounds, seem a fair price? Two pounds, rather, for my whole life. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was forgetting, I was forgetting. And the Dennis Compton Brill Cream poster. <laughs> and that Muffin the Mule puppet. Well? <laughs> all right, then. It's all right. You feeling all right? Oh, am I feeling all right? Oh, that is a good one. Oh, oh. <laughs> Stop showing off. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you've seen sense at last. I'm seeing a whole lot of things, Mother, in a different light entirely. I feel somehow strangely kind of remote from you all, you know. As if I was looking down on you from a great height. I've told you before, you are not having built up heels. <laughs> not talking about shoes, Mother. Talking about dying. Dying? You leave your hair alone. <laughs> Lift up shoes and dyed hair, people will think you're John Hanson. <laughs> mother, uh, mother, mother, don't you understand? Oh, mother, you please. Mother, All right, mother, it's mother, it's mother, mother, it's mother, it's mother, it's mother, it's mother. Oh, tell father. Oh, father! Oh, tell the cat. <laughs> The raffle tickets. <laughs> Language to the. Hello, Mother. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> this recording is only to be played after I'm, as it were, um, gone. <laughs> you see, you had no time to listen to me when I was alive. I mean, I realize that jumble sales and raffle tickets do have precedence over my tragic news, but I... Oh, no, wait a minute. Sorry, sorry. So I'll start again. That's it. Start again. 
Hello, mother. I'm dead. <laughs> no, that's tasteless. Sorry, it's not again. <laughs> Hello, mother. I have, as they say, popped over the hill for an earth sandwich. <laughs> mother, I do forgive you for the clips around the ear. The doctor says that very likely concussion has nothing at all to do with it. <laughs> There is something, Mother. <laughs> there is something, Mother, I must get off my chest. I lied about the grey gabardine overcoat you bought me on my 12th birthday. <laughs> it wasn't stolen by the gypsies. <laughs> You'll find it stuffed under the shed behind the cod liver oil bottle. <laughs> Along with the swimming costume you very kindly knitted me. <laughs> Whilst we're on the subject, I'd like to make a clean breast about the tortoise. I know you are very proud of the great age and health of Hector, and it is true... <laughs> it is true he is darker and glossier than he was last autumn. <laughs> He has also changed his sex at least once. Because <laughs> you see, Mother, it's not Hector. <laughs> it's a replacement. <laughs> In fact, it is the third Hector. On the first occasion, I had an accident with the garden roller. <laughs> well, actually, Hector had the accident. <laughs> Oh, too much talking to yourself can make you deaf, you know, and you can't hear what you're saying. It can be damn frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I help you, Father? Only I'm a little bit, uh, sort of busy. So I've only got 21 hours, 58 minutes to go now. <laughs> oh, come to pick your brains, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, pick my brain? Oh, case in point. Yeah. I've just, Father, uh, I'll give you these, if you don't mind. They're donor cards. You know, they say which hospitals I'd like my major organs to go to. Donor cards? Uh, donor kebabs, you mean? No, 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 my body I'm talking about, you see. I'm giving my body to various establishments, you see. And should there be a bit of a scrummage, you know, I want this, I want that, that kind of thing, I would like you to adjudicate. Oh, fair enough. Is that all you're saying? I'm giving my... Anyway, the thing is, I want to borrow your geometry set. Geometry set, Father? Excuse me, I'm 41. Uh, I don't uh, just look at this. It's a mole trap. <laughs> the Lumsden Liquidator. <laughs> well, jolly old uh, mole walks along here and he goes through this hole. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, what, I mean, aren't you expecting a little too much of the mole to go, you know, through that particular hole? Why would he go through that particular hole, I mean? It's the entrance. <laughs> Enough reason. Perfectly good. Oh, yes. uh, right, right. Well, he goes through there, yes, uh -huh. and he turns right, then he goes through this little door here, mm -hmm. and then he goes into compartment B, mm -hmm. and there he stays. Why? <laughs> because there's no way out. <laughs> oh, dear, I see. So he surrenders? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm standing there with the hoe. <laughs> what are you going to do? Weed him to death? I don't know. <laughs> They laughed at Christopher Columbus, didn't they? I know when I'm not wanted. Father, I'm not laughing at you. It's just that I've got rather a lot on my mind at the moment. Well, spit it out. What's a father for? That's what I asked Mother when I was 11. <laughs> she told me they were for bringing the coal in. <laughs> no, Father, the thing is, I'll tell you what. I'm so, I'm so worried, really, because I want to ask you advice. Supposing a fellow goes to the doctor, you see, and the doctor tells him he's a little bit... Uh, Oh, we had a chap at the water board like that. He used to have a go at anything that slowed down. <laughs> and then he had a go wearing his wife's dresses. Oh, damn nice he looked at them as well. No, the point is, Father, suppose a chap plays tennis too hard, say, and is taken ill. Oh, tennis elbow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very nasty below the waist. Well, don't you understand? <laughs> what I'm saying, Father, is that there are certain things I have left undone. You see? <laughs> <laughs> I realise I've, I've got nothing to leave behind, you know. I mean, not even a son. Well, nor have I. No, quite. What do you mean, no? <laughs> of course you are. Of 
Oh, yes, yes, I was forgetting you. <laughs> That's the trouble, Father. You see, everybody does. Oh, the world won't forget me in a hurry. <laughs> Take a regiment to move that compost. <laughs> Father, what I'm trying to say is, I am about to confront the Grim Reaper. What, your mother? Back already? <laughs> that comes from the tree powder on the cat. <laughs> Item five. I have another confession to make. I have often wanted to murder my father. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Tim? <laughs> Tim? <laughs> the usual, Jean. What's that? Oh. Half a shandy, please. I may never pass this way again, Jean. Oh, no. Hello, Fred. Hello, Jenny. Important as usual. Got these flowers for you. Oh. We don't want to be ships that pass in the night, Jean. What? Words unsaid. What words? Well, I don't know yet. They've not been said, have they? <laughs> No, life is too short. I have this feeling that I'm going to that bourne from which no traveller returns. You're going up the goat. Pardon? The goat in compasses. I know you toffee-nosed baskets from the Dramatic Society have started going up the goat. Just because they've got more different flavour crisps than we have. <laughs> Where I am going, Jean, the crisps will be ambrosia. <laughs> and the flavours will be infinite. Oh, the railway hotel. <laughs> Frank? Tarjean. Well, what did the quack say? The well, big eye, is it? The big eye? Indigestion. Frank, it's not indigestion. <laughs> well, what did he say? He went and spoke to a friend. <laughs> well, what did he say? 24 hours were mentioned, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you were pegging out, you wouldn't be here, you nana. Thank you very much, Frank, for your understanding. Ken. Do I, uh, do I owe you any money at all? I don't think so, do you? Well, I just want to get everything cleared up, you know, because I might not be... Uh, oh, like... all right, then. Um, you owe me two quid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, I've always had the greatest regard for you. <laughs> get off! <laughs> I'm not anybody's just for two quid. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't go around giving money to people. Well, I want to be remembered, Frank. <laughs> not as a complete idiot. You'll forget me. I'll certainly try. Uh, you know that my name isn't even on the darts cup. It's not even carved on this table. Arthur Flack, now he did make his mark. Well, fair's fair. He was sick on the ceiling. <laughs> what do you think I'll have on my gravestone, Frank? Timothy Lumsden. He was in charge of the library whenever Miss Peabody was in the toilet. It's not enough. <laughs> oh, I stopped oh, shouting. Oh, I will. One crowded hour. One crowded hour is worth an age without a name. Oh, be sick on the ceiling. Not feeling sick. You said you were dying. I am, I am, but I'm not feeling sick. It's perfectly possible. Lord Nelson didn't say, kiss me hard. It, ugh, it <laughs> well. Do you know, Frank, I was thinking, even my record with the thespians, with the thespians, good as I am, I've only had one mention in the Echo, Frank. One mention. And even then, they spell my name, Pibothy Loves Death. <laughs> <laughs> well, your mother will remember you. Mm. I don't care about my mother. I care about the world. That's who I care about, remembering me. People in here. I'm going to do something unforgettable, Frank. No, I'm going to stand in a chair hey, come on, and get make down. a speech get and down. take my trousers down. That's what it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Oi! There's a Colorado beetle in this sausage roll. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> to be or not to... Let, to be on, to be, listen a minute, to be on. All right, now it's time for the big one. I'm going. Hello? Timothy Lumsden? No, we don't know anybody here of that name, sorry. Oh, Timothy, what do you think of this? Take that off. That hat belonged to that Bailey person. He was a socialist. <laughs> Could have been anywhere. Mother, father, I've got something very important to say if you could just listen to me. After it. lunch, Timothy oh. dear, if you don't mind, lunch first. Mother, this morning I had to go to the hospital. I 
told you to go to Hardacres. What? <laughs> Did you get the raffle tickets? Does that really matter now, Mother? You didn't. No, get I them. didn't. Language to the. Shut up, Father. Don't you speak to your father. Like raffle that. tickets to you, Mother. Don't you speak to your mother like that. To How would you like to speak to my mother? <laughs> Thank heavens I was brought up properly. Well, Mother, I wasn't. You? There's something I've never told you, Timothy. I don't think you're my son. <laughs> they were very vague in that nursing home. They were always mixing up the babies. And the woman in the bed next to me was tiny. <laughs> what are you saying, Mother? And she wore glasses. <laughs> She stole my sponge bag. That's who you get it from. Just when I needed you. Well, I wish I'd never been born. Here, here. Well, I'll be gone soon, Mother. And it'll be as if I'd never been. Never been? I thought so. He's constipated. <laughs> You'll be sorry. When I'm dead, they'll all be sorry. I'm sorry, Sydney. Oh, I'm sorry. It's too late now, Phyllis. If only I'd been very, very nice to him. I'll never forgive myself. Well, how could you? I'm sure Timothy up in heaven is looking down and saying, I told you so. Yes, he was right. I need him stand in the corner on his 34th birthday. With his hands on his head. What hands, what a head. God, he was a magnificent creature. <laughs> How much do I owe you, Padre? No, please, it was an honor to officiate. No. The Archbishop of Canterbury has opened a fund for small men with glasses. <laughs> It's what he would have wanted. Oh, what have I done? Come along, Phyllis. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Lumsden. Henchard's the name. Colonel Despard, Henchard. I thought you ought to have these. The M.M., the Croix de Guerre. Purple Heart? You won't know about this. Timothy worked for us. Secret service. <laughs> One of the finest men it's been my privilege to serve with. I thought he worked at the library. <laughs> Cover. He was a mole. Damn nuisance moles, ruined lawns. Quite so. I think they're ready. A salute. Charger goes first. Mrs. Lumsden, we have not met before, and we will never meet again. I'm sorry. I'm too upset. You don't understand. I loved your son for many years. <laughs> In secret, of course. The fact is, I have a child. <laughs> My husband, the Emperor, thinks it is his son. But I know whose child I carried. The Crown Prince, Timothy of Cravonia. Hello, Granny. Your Imperial Highness. Although I never met my father and know nothing about him, I shall always, always remember him as the greatest man who ever lived. Timothy Lumsden. It's true. It's true. But it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Now, I told you, I sir. know, but you told me I had 24 hours. No, I wanted to keep you in for 24 hours because of your ECG. But I was reading the wrong one. Some joker had swapped them around. Now, we've been trying to telephone. You're perfectly all right. Uh, no wonder people want private medicine. What? Well, I, I shall have to have a second opinion. My second opinion is you need psychiatric help. <laughs> but you see, I've told Frank I'm going to die. I can't let him down. There's nothing wrong with you. It's highly inconvenient, this, you know. <laughs> Tough luck. Now, look, you're alive. Now, listen. Yes. Don't go playing tennis too soon after breakfast. No. Now, what was breakfast, by the way? The usual, you know. Uh, pickle walnuts and rhubarb crumble. <laughs> Rhubarb crumble off straight, huh? You see, I thought I was going to die, you see. I thought I was going to be somebody. You are somebody. You just happen to be somebody who's perfectly all right. Now, get out of the pub and celebrate, you stupid drongo. <laughs> A beautiful day. Shut up! Oh, no. oh, Frank! Oh, I've just dropped my dinky! <laughs> They're oh, precious! Dear Guinness Book of Records, my friend Timothy Lumsden just bought back all the stuff he took to the jumble sale. Only £24, Frank! Oh. Absolute bargain! These drinkies are priceless! And the Wonder Book of Rabbit! Oh! All the eagles for a tenner! <laughs> But they're yours! And I'm going to live! <laughs> you always were, you great twit! Oh, hey, and I'd bet you anything it was you that muddled up those charts. By such tiny accidents are great truths revealed. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> eh? Oh, life is good, Frank. Good old home, good old garden gate, good old post, good old numbers! <laughs> Good night, Tim. <laughs> Good night. Good night, sweet prince. Good night, ladies. <laughs> I've got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. Oh, what a beautiful day. Is that you, Timothy? <laughs> no, Mother, it's Gordon McRae and Shirley Jones. No, Gordon McRae and Cheryl don't wipe their feet, Mother. Not in films, they never wipe their feet. They never go to the lavatory either, have you noticed that? <laughs> I think it would be more real if occasionally they did, you know, say, why don't we stop the sunny with a fringe on top for a second while we creep into the corn, which is, after all, as high as an elephant's eye. <laughs> stop talking smut. Mother, all I'm saying is, I'm alive and life is wonderful. Stop telling fibs as well. <laughs> I have one more confession to make. <laughs> For 17 years, you have been making me a bedtime cup of sleepyhead beverage. <laughs> and every night, I have poured it onto the rubber plant. <laughs> I have put eight rubber plants to sleep. <laughs> and I blamed it on the cat. <laughs> Well, Mother, you were not supposed to listen to that. I said so, not until I was dead. I said it on the tape. You said after you'd gone. Well, you've been gone since three o'clock, so I listened. <laughs> to all of it. I've got 17 bones to pick with you. <laughs> Look at this raincoat. <laughs> well, you're going to wear it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry? Start saying sorry to the tortoise. <laughs> All right, I'm going, Mother. Not until you finish the rhubarb crumble. That's what started it all in the first place, Mother. It was your rhubarb crumble that made me ill. Well, I'm going to take it to the jumble. Crumble to the jumble. <laughs> You're drunk. Where are you going? I'm You're running away. He who fights and runs away, Mother, lives to sing. Oh, what a beautiful day!